Hi everyone, it's Ramon Khan from RMK Six Sigma bringing you another episode where I go through a worked example from my book Six Sigma Statistics using Minitab 17. Okay, so even if you don't own the book, you can still download the data set we're going to be going through uh, from my website rmk6sigma.com. If you like what you see, please hit the thumbs up or subscribe. Hello Minitabers, today we're going to be doing sequential design of experiment. Before we start the module, I do recommend that you have a look at multiple regression and how that's handled in the assistant before you do design of experiment. The reason being the menu setup menus are very similar and the output reports by the assistant are very similar. And because this is a fairly fast paced introduction to design of experiment, it will help you to be familiar with multiple regression first. The other thing I recommend that you do is have a look at the terminology used for design of experiment as given in chapter 13 of the book that will help you understand things as well. Okay, so sequential design of experiment is handled differently in the assistant as to how you would do it using the classical menus. It's become much more of a process that's far easier to use and you're given assistance throughout the process by the assistant. Uh, so you start off with maybe 15 factors and you would reduce those down using a screening experiment uh, to between two and five factors. The assistant then guides you through using a modeling DOE to then characterize the inputs for your required outputs in the modeling design and it also looks for interactions. If Minitab finds curvature, it will then recommend that you add more data points to fit a quadratic model, or it may be that you've got enough data points anyway and it will automatically fit a quadratic model for you. So it's all about the DOE process by using a number of different DOEs all set within the assistant. So it's taken quite a complex process and made that much easier for the beginner to use. So if we quickly have a look at this process sheet to start off with, uh, so when you start you have the choice of either running a screening DOE or a modeling DOE and this depends on the number of factors that you have. So if you have more than five factors you run the screening DOE to bring that down to uh, two to five uh, significant factors. So you run the screening DOE, get to those two, uh, two to five factors, then you can run your modeling DOE. And from that if Minitab finds curvature it allows you to add additional points into that model to fit the quadratic model. Okay, let's have a look at our uh, the exercise that we're going to be doing today. And this is exercise 13.7.1, Starship Engine Power. So you are helping Jock, the chief engineer, increase the engine power of Starship Emoji. Jock has identified eight factors and levels that he wants investigated. Your mission is to boldly identify significant factors and maximize the response power using the screening DOE. Once significant factors have been identified, run the modeling DOE with the intention of maximizing the response using existing levels. If curvature is detected, conduct additional runs to characterize the curvature. Okay, so I've given all eight factors below the screening DOE factors are listed below using the following format. So we start off with full factor name, then in brackets, the column heading, then the low setting of the factor and the high setting for the factor. Because I've only shown the full um, factor names here, then I condense them down just to a column heading. So you'll only see those to, um, when we run Minitab. So engine temperature is temp, low level is nine, high level is 12. Magnetic field density, is MFD, low setting is 180, then high setting is 230. And then we have magnetic field flux, MM, MFF, low setting of 26, high setting of 49. Then we have scones, and depending on whether they are cream or jam, we have a low of zero or one, and these are categorical settings, so there's no in-between values. So zero to indicate cream scones, and one to indicate jam scones. Then we have reaction initiation, is it crank or fusion? Again, that's a categorical setting, so zero or one. Then we have core wavelength, back to our continuous factors, and that's condensed, uh, called wave, so either a low setting of 13 and a high setting of 21. Plasma input angle, PIA, 14 or 26. Plasma input flux, PIF, 80 or 20. So let's go over to Minitab. 
Now you see for once I haven't preloaded the data and there's a reason for that. Every time you start a sequential DOE you have to create the worksheet. So I need to create the worksheet. So to start that off I click on Assistant, DOE, Plan and Create. And then I want to create a screening design to get those eight factors down to between two and five. So I click on that. Okay, I can leave the response as response or I can change the name. But I'm actually going to change the name to power. My number of factors is eight. And just be wary here that you can't see all eight factors. You can only see seven. You have to use the slider to move up and down. And the total runs I'm going to have in there is 24. That's just to increase the effect that I can look for. OK, so I'm not going to make you sit through while I type in uh, the factors. I'll just do the first one while you're watching. So, T -E. Temp, tab, tab, low setting of 9, high setting of 12. And when I want to, I can change the continuous to categorical just by clicking on the drop down menu. So I'm just going to cut it off there and type in the rest myself. OK, I've typed in all my data for the eight factors. Remember, you can't see all eight in one go. You have to use the pull down bar. And don't forget to put scone as a categorical factor, same as initiation as a categorical factor. OK, total number of runs has been changed to 24 to uh, be able to detect smaller effects. OK, so I'm ready to create my sheet. going to click OK. It's asking me, do I want to print the data forms? Well, I would normally, so I can run the experiment off the forms. But because this is an exercise, I don't need to do that. OK, so I've created the worksheet. And I've also created a two-page report about the design summary. So let's have a quick look at that. So I've got my design information there. Uh, base design was eight factors, 12 runs. We're actually running 24 runs. I've got my high and low levels of my factors. And then on the right here, I've got my detection ability. And that's telling me, in terms of power, I have an 80% chance of detecting effects of 1.06 standard deviations okay and if i look down here i'm told that 1.06 which is about somewhere here between one and two is between small and moderate effects so i've been given a qualitative some qualitative information about the size of effect that i can detect uh, with the data that i've got okay so let's have a look at the worksheet So this is the worksheet I would run through uh, each of the experiments in run order and I would write down the result under power. But because they've been randomised, um, standard order is different for everyone, we have to delete everything here and copy everything in that was in the uh, downloaded worksheet. So let's do that now so then we all have the same results that we're working on. Delete. Copy what's in Excel and transfer that over to mini tab. And this is the same as um, pretending that we've run the experiments. We've got our response data now and enter that into the worksheet so we can now analyze our screening design. OK, so we click Assistant, DOE, Analyze, Interpret. And we're going to fit our screening design. Again, it's asking me, do I want to fit the screening model? And I'm going to say yes, because I've just told it to. OK, so we'd start off with a summary report. It's nicely landed on that for us. And we're shown that we have five significant factors, uh, because the dotted line there represents our 0.1 significance level, and any factor uh, with an effect that's deemed significant will exceed uh, that dotted line, so MMF, MFD, SCONE, PIA and TEMP are all significant factors. The remaining three are not. We are told that our R squared value is 88.08%, meaning that 88% of the variation in the model can be explained by the factors.
Okay, moving on to the next page. Where we have our main effects. So these are main effects. Uh, the unhighlighted ones, the white ones here, are our significant factors, and the grayed out ones are our are our insignificant factors. Then we have the diagnostic report. So our residuals versus fitted values here, we're looking for large residuals and unequal variation. So we don't have that, so we're in the clear. Then we have our residuals versus observation order. Look for non-random patterns in large residuals. Again, this one's not really relevant because we've sorted our data. So although it looks quite non-random anyway, don't forget we all sorted our data. So this one doesn't apply. And then we're given the all clear from the report card. So let's just go back to our uh, project window. So that's our screening model. We've now found five significant factors. Let's now design an experiment to maximize our significant factors to get a maximum value of power. So click Assistant, DOE, Analyze, Interpret. And this time we want to create the modeling design. Do we want to set new factor levels? No, we're still going to use the same high and low factor levels as we did before. So click on No. And look how easy it is for us that Minitab has brought in all our factor information. We just need to change the response name to Power. And tell Minitab that we want to maximize the response. We've got our five factors with our five factor information. And we're going to run one replica of the design. So that increases our number of runs to 40. Click OK to create the new worksheet. Do I want to print the forms? Again, click No. Let's just have a look at our worksheet first. So there we have our modeling design worksheet. And if we have a quick look at the summary report for that. And there's our design information. And we're told on this occasion we have an, to obtain a power of 80%. Uh, we'll be looking for effects down to 0.91 standard deviations, which is deemed to be small effects. So that's great. Going back to the project window. OK, so now again we want to conduct the experiment. We're doing that by deleting all this information and copying in the experimental information on the Excel worksheet power model. Should be 40 rows of information there, one for each of the experimental runs. And there are control C. Let copy that into Minitab. So again, we're pretending we've done the experimental runs. Here's our response information. Can you analyze that for us, Minitab? So to analyze that in the modeling design, we click Assistant, DOE, Analyze and Interpret, and now fit the linear model. What's your goal? Maximize the response. Click OK. Even though we already told Minitab that that was our goal. So quite a few rows of data being generated. Um, so we see here that none of the interactions are significant. It's just the main factors that are significant again in this run. The R squared adjusted has dropped to 83.69%. Okay, let's have a look at the next page. And that's the effects report. So here again shows all the interaction plots and none of those are significant because they're all grayed out. And we just have our main effects plots below and this is our, for our significant factors. And can you notice it's the high level one in each case that's giving the best response for us. Again, diagnostics report, there's no issues with our residuals. And again, we sorted the data, uh, so we don't really need to look at that. And then we get our prediction and optimize, optimization report. So to maximize the power, our maximum 
predicted value is 721 within the 95% prediction interval of 662.5 and 781.01 and these are the levels that we would need to set. So here we can uh, see the sensitivity settings and sensitivity for optimal solution. So in each case we're picking the high level. Okay, now if that wasn't possible, we would have to have a look here and decide why that wasn't possible. But we've been given some alternate solutions for the um, maximum power. But you can see these predicted solutions are much lower than the 721 uh, given for the goal level. Okay, let's have a quick look at the report card. Now. On the report card, we're given the clear on everything, but we're told under curvature, Minitab did not detect any evidence of curvature in your data. When curvature exists, the average response at the center point is either higher or lower than the average response at the corner points. A linear model may ad adequately describe the relationship between the response and the factors. So Minitab saying you don't need to add exp additional experimental runs to look for a quadratic model. Okay. It then talks about next steps, what you would do, uh, but in this case we can see that all the main effects are um, given the maximum response at the high level. So maybe you'd want to explore that further, push these levels higher if it was possible to get a higher response. Okay, so that rounds up sequential design of experiment. If you've got any questions, please drop us a line. Uh, otherwise, please, you know, if you liked what you saw, please give us a thumbs up and have a look at the, the book or the, the, our website at rmk6sigma.com. Thank you. Bye.